I'm Sajana Corden and uh, Vasily Kisaka um, um, to join our conference uh, on uh, debates on World War One in, in Southeastern Europe. Uh, first of all, let's uh, introduce uh, both of you. Okay, I'm Vasily Kisaka. I'm an educator, a school consultant, and a researcher in education at the University of uh, Peloponnese, Corinth. Uh, I teach history and didactics at the University of Zagreb at the Department of History. Thank you. And you both uh, um, presented your uh, papers today on, on research on, on uh, history textbooks at schools and uh, in regard with uh, World War One. What are your main findings? Uh, you you researched on, on Greece and you researched uh, in a comparative perspective on, on Serbian Croatia. Okay. So I I would prefer to, to say that my research was on the politics of history uh, and I'm, I'm using history textbooks as my uh, main source. Uh, uh, so my uh, research was on, uh, it was a comparative analysis of Croatian and Serbian history textbooks uh, on the World War I uh, uh, from, and from 1918 onwards. So my main findings, uh, I think uh, one of the points of my uh, presentation was that uh, basically there was no one single narrative, uh, and, and neither in Yugoslavia nor in successor states. So since 1918 there were some common elements, a common framework, but narratives very much depended on the textbook, whether it was uh, Serbian or Slovenian, Croatian. So I, um, my uh, field was the history textbooks in secondary education and primary education, but for the last 15 years, and uh, based on, the, on the content analysis, um, actually World War I uh, is um, um, research is presented separately in uh, Greek textbooks, uh, as it, it seems and it's faced like an incident an incident in between the a decade of wars, starting from the Balkan Wars in 1912 and ending with the Asia Minor catastrophe, the end of Greek Tur the Greek Turkish War in 1922. Not much of Greek collective consciousness and mentality, um, marked by the fact of uh, national schism, that is, that. Uh, uh, the inability of the country to decide uh, where to stand when uh, World War I erupted, and the division of different political attitudes between Prime Minister Eleftherios Venizelos and the King Constantine I, the first one being pro entente and the second one being pro uh, central uh, powers, but actually uh, promoting neutrality. Uh, this created a deep gap in the country, uh, which uh, marked the next years and decades, decades, um, and it's a kind of lenses uh, this national schism in order to understand and uh, um, let's say uh, uh, realize the, the 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 peculiarity of uh, Greek modern uh, contemporary history, as it, uh, Greek civil war was based on that fact, and this division followed uh, the country until recently, until sixties. So that was the focus I made, try to, to see how national division, national schism is uh, connected to World War I. Actually, it was a series of wars and Great War was part of it. Mm -hmm. And how was then specifically World War I portrayed and uh, depicted in, in the textbooks? Can you give us some examples? Um, in Greek textbooks is a, um, a separate section. Um, fo uh, the focus in uh, most of the books is uh, on uh, factology, uh, trenches war, uh, treaties and results, uh, while uh, in one or two cases, um, and it always depends on the epistemological and ide ideological uh, background of the writers of the books, uh, in uh, one or two cases, we have focused on the humanistic aspect, to the fact that there is a to it, it was a total war, there is a gentle attitude but an uh, approach, but uh, it's not uh, the commonplace in uh, Greek books. Actually, Greek history education is uh, still old-fashioned, nation-centered, and 
you just uh, find a small um, 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 tiny ways to, to break through this kind of barrier but uh, the common story is that uh, there is a need of a lot to be done in order to change this paradigm. Um, Yugoslavia was a multinational state and uh, uh, basically in uh, textbooks, different textbooks, this, uh, there are different perspectives on World War I and from the very beginning there was a question on how to reconcile stories from uh, uh, those who fought on both sides of the front line, uh, stories of winners and losers in the mm -hmm. war. Uh, and uh, what I said, uh, mentioned before, actually there was never one single story. So uh, there were uh, different amounts of pages dedicated to, for example, in Serbian textbooks, uh, they, they dedicated much more pages to war events and uh, Croatian textbooks dedicated more pages to political events, uh, emphasizing fr frictions between Serbian government and uh, uh, um, uh, Croatian and Slovenian politicians from Austro-Hungary uh, who wanted to uh, create a common Yugoslav state. That was the, uh, the period during the Second World War then uh, uh, after the Second World War in the socialist, in socialist Yugoslavia uh, there was an attempt to create a common uh, ide identity based on, uh, um, uh, uh, on some uh, uh, supranational um, uh, ideological values such as uh, uh, class consciousness and uh, um, okay I'm sorry. I lost the time to time. <laughs> yeah, it was a very long day. Okay. Um, one final question to both of you. Uh, what would you suggest in, in, in with regard to the future or present uh, plans or curricula of, of national uh, history education? Um, would you uh, suggest more coverage of World War One or in a different way? I would suggest something completely different. Actually, I did it. I was part of a committee who suggested uh, and worked uh, uh, during one whole year on uh, a new proposal that was uh, um, kindly rejected by <laughs> the government. Uh, we suggest uh, a different approach, um, a more holistic approach to uh, major events of uh, modern history, not only modern and contemporary history. Uh, with, of course, more focus to social uh, history and uh, history from below. And um, I think that um, it's, it's commonplace and it's, so, it's not new to say that we have to, to, to move uh, ahead from what your reason described as um, um, the traditional and paradigmatic uh, model of uh, historical narrative to a more critical one. And that means that we have to change dramatically, not only curricula, but approaches too, based on constru constructivistic um, uh, methodology and um, more teamwork. But uh, it needs a lot of teacher training and a change of attitude uh, to this very much politicized, politicized um, you know, approach of uh, Greek government. Mm -hmm. uh, history is... Uh, Greece is, uh, has a plethora of memory and plethora of, uh, I don't know how to say, um, public history is very strong and affects a lot of uh, decisions of the kind. So uh, we had a lot of paradigms of uh, nice books or at, at least uh, um, different books that were rejected and provoked uh, a lot of um, public debate. Oh, uh, I, I agree that it is not uh, not so much matter how much do you teach about the war, war but uh, uh, how are you going to teach about it? Uh, uh, so uh, the the uh, the problem is that uh, uh, the teaching about the, the war, different wars, World War One, uh, World War Two, 1990s wars in uh, all Yugoslav success, successor states, is very much politically used. And it should be a sort of depolitization of teaching about the war, and just uh, uh, try to teach to, to uh, basically to, to teach it in a very different way than it, it's it has been taught so far. Uh, and uh, what uh, Vasilika just said is our constructivistic approach. It basically applies to every topic in uh, uh, in our curriculum as well to the war, but. 
wars, especially uh, those wars which are which are treated as a sort of you know founding event, events like it was the Second World War for Socialist Yugoslavia or 1990s war is now treated uh, in uh, contemporary Croatia, basically have a special treatment, and this is a problem. Uh, uh, we still have debates about the Second World War. And uh, of course, uh, <laughs> I think that we will have for uh, years and years now debates about the, the 1990s war. Uh, the First World War is not so much politicized. Mm -hmm. And basically, I think this is a good opportunity to, uh, to teach it differently than, uh, or, or set it as a model on how to teach about the war. And uh, may I add something that um, there is a, a need to approach traumatic and controversial issues, uh, which actually are avoided by the teachers who feel um, not so eager, the majority at least of them, to, to question the grand narrative. So um, there are a lot of issues to, to discuss here. The Balkans produce mm. more history than they have consumed, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> I think that everybody <laughs> produces. Yes. <laughs> more history than our educational systems can consume. Yeah, exactly. That's why we have a selection and uh, there's always a question, how do you make this selection? Okay, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you. The question of the politicization of histories is a common one uh, across not only in Southeast Europe, and there's still a lot of work to do for researchers, historians and teachers. Thank you very much.